Welcome to another episode of What is Hashimoto's with Dr. Martin Rutherford. To find out more on any of our topics or for information on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Rutherford, please visit us at whatishashimoto's.com. And now, here's Dr. Rutherford. So is your diet triggering your chronic condition or your chronic pain or your chronic fatigue? So the answer to that is, yeah, for sure. Absolutely, there is no question about it. Any of those things that you are experiencing and you're not figuring out what is the right diet for you first before you try any of the billions of supplements that people are taking out there. Uh, anybody who doesn't think diet is uh, a part of that, um, is never gonna get well. I mean, I don't think I could say it any more succinctly than that. Uh, it's interesting, and when I remember when I first started doing this, and we started with fibromyalgia, that was it, because that kind of encompassed everything, pain, fatigue, everything. And, and I just remember my first patient, <laughs> and I said, I said, well, you're not gonna be eating gluten, and you're, you're going to have to stop drinking alcohol. Not everybody has to stop drinking alcohol, so don't start throwing things at me. But, but you're, and you're going to have to, and, you're, and, and, and the lady's like, I'm going to stop drinking my martinis. Now, I know it's kind of like not food, but it's kind of, it's kind of in the same, similar swimming pool there. And, 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 then, and then the husbands are like, well, well, what's gluten? And I'm like, well, it's, it's pasta, it's bread. They literally look at me and go, that's not happening. He literally grabbed their hand. <laughs> <laughs> he, he pulled her out of the chair and they walked <laughs> out of my exam room. <laughs> it was like, okay, maybe I need to go about this a different way. But the reality is, is more, more than back then, God knows how many years ago that was, um, food is, 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 a, is a baseline for so much of this. And it, and it varies. As I'm saying this, I'm thinking about, about a million different things because it varies from case to case, like chronic fatigue. If you have chronic fatigue, um, there are just a lot of things that are, are, are related to that that are not food related. However, food sensitivities can be a big player in chronic fatigue. Food sensitivities alone will cause inflammation. They'll cause blood sugar swings. When your blood sugar drops, you get fatigue. If you have blood sugar that's going up and down like this, or you have diabetes, those things are gonna be affected by food, okay? And those are gonna, and those are gonna create fatigue. But on, but, on a, but on a wider level, a lot of what's happening out there today is, um, is that we're stressed. I, I, you know, and, and, and I used to, like when my parents would say, oh, that person got cancer because they were stressed. Or that person got this because they were stressed. I used to think that was really mean. You know, I was like, you're mean. Yeah, you know, why are you like saying stuff like that? But you know what? I, they were largely correct. And, and my dad knew what stress was. He was in World War II and he had PTSD and he had all kinds of things. It's my stress, my stress. And I thought, dad, you know, but he was right. I, he was right. I, all I, the vast majority of patients that come into me with chronic condition have a chronic stress response. And what does that do? Okay. What does that do? It, a chronic stress response, it, it, it affects every single cell in your body. You know, trillions of cells, right? Trillions of little chemical activity. And that, and that damages, uh, the number one thing that stress does more than anything is, is it shuts down your, it shuts down your, 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 your digestive. Most of you understand that stress can cause like gastritis or, or even more so you probably understand it. it. It's like the main cause of ulcers. And some of you are going to go, oh, no, it's H. pylori. Not unless you're stressed. Not unless you're stressed. Because then you have 95% of the, uh, uh, of the population in the world it's thought to have H. pylori, but it, it doesn't express itself until you become compromised. And no one thing compromised. Where does it sit? It sits in your stomach. You get stress responses. There's a stuff called cortisol, and it just starts and when you get stressed. It's your stress hormone. Most of you seem to know that these days. I think it annihilates your stomach, annihilates the inside of your intestine. Put your put your intestines into a degree of fight flight. Now you're not digesting foods. Now we're back to the food. Now you're not digesting foods. And what happens? You don't sterilize the food because you're not digesting it right in your stomach. You're, 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 not, you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not digesting it. 
it's 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 becoming acidic. Okay, it needs to be alkaline to go into your intestines, and the next thing you know, it goes in your intestines, and this is what food sensitivity. Food sensitivities are real. I had a guy I, I, I try to treat right now. He said, I think food sensitivities are BS. All right, fine. Well, then I'm not going to treat you because they're not BS. You know, and they are a big deal. And when you, and when you start developing food sensitivities, yeah, foods have a lot to do with it. Now, food sensitivities lead to things like small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, leaky gut. Once you get leaky gut, oh my God, now the, f the undigested food particles that you have can get out of that leaky gut. They can cause inflammatory processes. They can cause inflammation all throughout your body. So if you get inflammation throughout your body, is that gonna is that gonna affect fatigue? Oh yeah. If you get inflammation throughout your body, is that gonna is that gonna cause joint pain? Yeah. It's gonna contribute to to various people's joint pain. It's gonna cause brain fog. It's gonna, it's gonna affect everything. And and so now, from the perspective of food sensitivities, yeah, yeah, it's 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 a big player. Most people realize that if they got blood sugar problems, they have to get rid of the like I, I got diabetes, pre diabetes, or diabetes type two. I need I, so I stop cutting out all my sugars. So that's food. Okay, but people are like, no, that's not the kind of food I'm talking about. Like I'm talking about regular foods. Yeah, uh, but 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 most of you don't know that muscle soreness and muscle achiness is frequently caused by um, is frequently caused by uh, blood sugar fluctuation because your blood sugar stores a lot of is store a, your muscles store a lot of blood sugar as does your liver so it can affect your liver it can affect your blood sugar. So, so, but foods in and of themselves, allergies, of course, you know that that affects you. I don't even test for allergies because people come in here, they know what they are. They go, I, I, uh, I, 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 eat, I eat eggs and, and I blow up. Immediately I, I get eggs, my eggs, my comes out or I, have, or I get a reaction. Potent people, you know, you have the extreme of the person who takes the peanuts and they have an anaphylactic response. This is, you're talking about more food sensitivities and and the food sensitivities are stealth like you like you don't eat the food and suddenly have a cause have a cause of migraine or you don't eat the food and suddenly have blowed up or you don't eat the food and suddenly have uh, uh joint pain what happens is the food goes into the into the system where it's not going to digest it it sits there it becomes it it becomes acidic it becomes it, like, it putrefies. It literally like rots, right? It, it's, it's like it, it's getting not digested in your stomach. It's sitting there too long. Then it goes in your intestines. It's sitting there for a while, maybe days. The undigested, a lot of the undigested food particles go on its way, but a lot of them don't. They just sit there in your 20 some feet, what, 24, 25, 26 feet of intestines. They just sit there. And then they go through the leaky gut that has been formed by all of this stuff and they go into your bloodstream. Guess what? They don't belong in your bloodstream. They go into your bloodstream with a lot of other toxins. And, but, and that causes a lot of the pain. But that process takes two, three, four, sometimes for those of you who go to the bathroom once a week, and I have patients that go to the bathroom once a week, move their bowels once a week, um, that could take four or five days. So you can eat the food on a Monday, and it may not cause you, the, it might not flare up your migraine headache until. Thursday afternoon, or it might ca not cause your joint pain until um, you know Wednesday afternoon, and and the food ingestion of something that you have developed a sensitivity to also also plays on, on in, into other factors. That food will create an inflammatory response. That inflammatory response will cause your adrenal glands to put out something called cortisol. That will cause your blood sugar to go up and down. That'll cause fatigue. That'll cause chronic pain. That'll cause chronic and other chronic conditions. And, and, and that can happen for five or 10 years before anybody goes, oh, you know what, you're pre-diabetic. So now you're getting numbness and tingling in your feet at night, and, and, and you're getting lightheaded. And when your blood sugar drops, you get irritable and shaky, and you, get, and, and you, want, to, and you want to choke your husband or your wife or whatever because, because you get so jittery. And, 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 it, and it's food that you ate on, on Monday morning that was creating this chemical res response that was creating other physiology to go off. Can that food, that food over a period of time can actually screw up your, your, uh, your hormone metabolism. It can screw up your, it can, it can set off 
biochemical processes that in turn will screw up your, your um, female hormones. And, and I guess guy hormones too, but I treat a lot more females than guys. So, but so I think in those terms, but, 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 but female hormones are much more sensitive than, than guys hormones for obvious reasons. So, and for so many reasons, and then, and then there's, and then there's autoimmune disease, right? So I, I just have, I have patients that come in here and I have so much online on autoimmune disease. So I guess everybody in the world is not watching my stuff. <laughs> Because I have so many people come in here and, they, and, and they're, they're just like oblivious to all of the triggers for autoimmune disease. To me, I mean, this is something that I like have been bathed in for like a couple of decades now. And so, so it's like hard for me to understand that somebody off of Hashimoto's doesn't know that if they eat gluten, it's not just going to blow them up. It's not just going to blow up their thyroid and cause about 20 different symptoms. It's going to blow up maybe their cerebellum and cause them to be dizziness, vertigo, and balance. Maybe they have celiac and they don't know it. So now they're going to have chronic diarrhea. So there's, there's triggers like that. There's food triggers that, that are actual triggers for autoimmune thyroid disease and autoimmune disease in general. There are certain triggers that are going to blow up your eczema and your psoriasis and so on. So you have, so you have food sensitivities and you have triggers and then you have the downstream effects of what occurs when your body responds negatively to those triggers and and then you have allergies you know allergies which actually again the peanut allergy everybody's familiar with that and then you have those types of things. food is huge if i have somebody comes in here and they're not and they're not on board with changing their diet and they're not on board with with testing their food sensitivities we we have no gain we're not we're not even treating I have people who yell at me. Well, I just read that and I've heard it's a bunch of crap. And it's, I like, I don't care what you've heard. I mean, this is what I do for a living. If, if we don't do this, you're not going to get better. And if you don't get better, you're going to be ticked off at me, not you. You're going to say, well, you should have known to do that. <laughs> well, I do. So, so, so if you ever call me and you want me to help you, just know you're getting a food sensitivity test and your diet's changing. And I, we don't use one diet. Just a, a, another perfect example. Is like, we use like 15 different diets. We use like two basic diets that we put together, one for SIBO, one for oral tolerance, which is food sensitivities. But then within the framework of that, there's like 13 other different diets that are, that there are nuances there that we have to work into those diets for that person's specific issues. And so, hey, foods, like how can, I, I'm always marvel at it. I'm thinking like, how can you not think that something that you put in your mouth and it goes into your intestines which is which is like the one thing that connects your insides right to to the outside is the food that you take from the outside it was grown in the ground you put it in here and it goes how could you think it's not a problem that it may not be a problem probably because you eat it and you don't immediately drop dead so you figure okay I must be okay but but two or three or four days later you might want to feel like you dropped dead because yeah foods man I mean foods are a big part of the problem. Hey, you can even, you know, start getting into the, I don't think this is what the question was intending, but obviously you can get it into the, the glyphosates and the Roundup uh, and, and, and the insecticides and stuff like that. I don't think that was the question. Uh, but, but when you look at that's going inside your body too. And for those of you who think that's like, like some of the people I listen to on the radio who think that it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. You can't put that stuff in your system without it, without it creating an effect. Your liver's got to detoxify it, but I don't, I'm, again, I don't, I'm not sure that's exactly where the, where the question was going. So yes, foods, uh, food, foods can trigger just about, just about any symptom you can have, truly. I mean, anything from migraines to joint pain to muscle aches to any bowel symptom that you can possibly imagine. And, uh, and, 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 and food's like where it starts. If you go to an alternative medical practitioner and they're not starting with food, whether a medical doctor and they're going to start putting you on chelation or they're going to start doing, oh, my Lyme treatment and all this type of stuff, or it's a, or it's a functional medicine doctor and they're, they're giving you the standard AI paleo diet, which is not, I use, but not for everybody. Or, but, or they don't start with a diet. Like I see a lot of them come in from other uh, functional medicine practitioners and with bags of supplements. Okay. I'm sorry that if you don't start a diet, then that person's not practicing. Um, they're, they don't have a knowledge of chronic conditions and chronic pain and chronic fatigue um, the way they should have. 
So yes, food is a huge factor in creating uh, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, and chronic conditions. Thank you for joining us for another episode of What is Hashimoto's? To find out more on any of our topics or for information on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Rutherford, please visit us at whatishashimoto's.com.